Good day, good day, everyone, and we meet yet again. I know that you're still working hard preparing for those uh, prelims and your final exams. So I thought I'd just uh, give you this question um, uh, as we prepare, you know, for, for circuits. You know, uh, someone asked me to do some more uh, circuit questions. So I thought I'd just uh, hold this quick video just as a form of revision, right? So we're given a uh, nine volt uh, uh, battery they said in the circuit above the reading on the emitter is 0 0.2 amperes and the battery has an emf of 9 volts and an internal resistor r right so there's our battery there okay and now we said the first thing that we're always going to do is analyze what is happening in the circuit right so now i'm going to take uh, the circuit i'm going to say well my current I know that total current is going to come out of the battery, all right? It's going to pass through the 11 ohm resistor. And when we get to this node, I know that the current is going to actually uh, divide, right? So some of the current goes there. Let's call the current there I1. Let's call the current there I2, okay? But remember, we know that the total current passes through the 11 ohm resistor, okay? So now... It means that I1 will pass through the 11 ohm resistor as well as that emitter reading over there. Now note, they said uh, the reading on the emitter is 0 0.2 amperes. So it means that this is the current that passes through that uh, emitter there. But then it means that it's the current that is passing through the 11 ohm resistor, right? Okay. And now let's check what we need to calculate, all right? So we know total current in this case so we know that i1 and i2 basically meet at that point there and they come out as the total current so we know that the total current uh, will go there all right so uh, until it gets back to the battery right so now let's try and answer the questions uh, that they asked us quickly right so they said calculate the current through the 5.5 ohm resistor now We've got resistors that are in parallel. Now, please, if you haven't watched uh, my videos on uh, Ohm's law, please make sure that you do yourself that favor so that you can understand exactly what I'm going uh, uh, to be saying right now and so that you can be able to do these questions quite efficiently, right? But for those of you that have already watched, okay, so how do we, what did we say about resistors in parallel? We said we know that resistors in parallel are current dividers, but we know that voltage is the same, right? So now it means if I take these two resistors, right, I know that the voltage across the 5.5 ohm resistor is the same as the voltage across the 11 ohm resistor right so now can i find the voltage across the 11 ohm resistor that's where i've got the most information so that's where i'm going to start I'm going to say okay so it means that the voltage let me call it uh, v parallel okay because it's going to be the voltage across both those resistors so v parallel is going to be right it's going to be current but which current? It's current I1 multiplied by R, okay? So in this case, I've got current I1 multiplied by R, which is going to be 0 0.2 multiplied by the resistance, which is 11 ohms, okay? So what do I get there, okay? Okay, um, we get a value of 2.2 volts. Okay, so now we know the voltage across the 11 ohm resistor. But remember, we said voltage for resistors in parallel is the same. So that means that we also know the voltage across our 5.5 ohm resistor. So I can now say, well, to calculate the current I2 is now going to be the voltage there. So that's V parallel divided by the resistance. Okay. And that would now be 2.2 divided by 5.5. Um, and I believe we will get a current of 0 0.4 amperes. 
okay now i could have actually predicted this because when i look at this remember that more current goes where there is less resistance right so when the current divides there uh, obviously more current is going to go through the 5.5 ohm resistor but when i note this resistor here is uh, twice as small so it's half the resistance there right so it means that the current here is going to be twice as large right so if the current day is 0 0.2 the one here is going to be twice as large which is going to be 0 0.4 uh, um, uh, 0 0.4 mps now let's go to the next question all right so now they ask us to find or to calculate the internal resistance okay of the battery all right now if you remember we said if we wanted to ever find the internal resistance of the battery what we normally do okay we know that we're going to use the equation e is equals to i into r plus small r okay but remember we said which current do we use here we're going to use the total current of our circuit right so we need to still find that and which r do we need to use here remember we use the external resistance it means now we're going to have to take all of those resistors combined and find uh, um you know the effective resistance in our circuit right so now and of course we would now need to get the uh, internal resistance but remember emf is already given so what i'm going to do let's just make some space over here okay let's start with our resistors okay so what do i note those two resistors are in parallel so let's find our parallel first now ladies and gents you remember to find our parallel you normally say one over r parallel is equal to one over r1 okay one over r2 uh, i've got only two resistors in parallel here so uh, in that case you can do that right but if i've got two resistors i can just simply um use this shortcut okay right that r parallel is equal to the product so that's r1 divided uh, multiplied by r2 divided by the sum of my resistors okay you can go with that uh, calculation there nothing wrong with it uh, but this one is uh, actually quite it makes our work quite easy right so that's product over sum so that's r1 plus r2 okay so all we need to do let's find out what uh, is our product over sum so that's 11 multiplied by 5.5 divided by 11 plus 5.5 okay and what does that give us let's check our calculator quickly okay i get a value of 3.67 okay um if you still want to maintain it as 11 over 3 that's still okay uh so that it's more accurate okay so it means that what we've uh, essentially done is that we've taken those two resistors and we've made them into one resistor okay so if you can just imagine our circuit now it has one 11 ohm resistor okay and then we took those two and we made them into one resistor which is 3.67 okay so those two we've made into that one resistor there which is 3.67 so now i want you to note which current passes through that resistor it's the total current so which current would pass through this resistor now okay it would be the total current as well so what does that mean it means those two resistors must now be in series so that's how we'll get our um uh, total current in the circuit or what we call r external so r external in this case will simply be 11 okay plus 3.67 all right so that will give us uh that's 14.67 ohms okay so that's our r external value all right so now um it seems like uh we are almost there we've got our r external which we're going to substitute there okay uh we've got all right our total current can we find a total current in this case 
Yes, we can. Uh, remember, we said the current over there was 0 0.2 amperes. We found the current over there to be 0 0.4 amperes. What do we know about resistors in parallel? Well, we know that the sum of the currents across the resistor will be equal to the total current, isn't it? So the current there plus the current there will give us the total current in our circuit. Okay, uh, so what we're simply going to do is, okay, let me just move this a little bit. Okay, so what we're simply going to do is just to say, all right, now we want the total current. So it means that I total uh, will be equals to I1 plus I2, which is 0 0.4. Uh, or 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4, okay, which will give us 0 0.6 amperes, okay? So now that we've got the total current, we can now go on to find out what is our internal resistance. Now let's substitute for all that we have. We know that our EMF value, remember this was given as 9, okay? So we're going to just simply substitute our total current this is 0 0.6, okay? R external, we found that to be 14.67, and we are looking for resistor R over there, okay? Right, uh, sorry for that bad, terrible handwriting, but I'm sure that you can see that, okay? So all that we need to do is just uh, do our calculation. So we're going to, um, I'm just going to make this quite easy. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.6. Okay, so that uh, we get rid of that. Okay, so 9 divided by 0 0.6. Okay, that gives me 15. So on the side, I've got 15. Okay, so that's 15 is equal to now on this side is 14.6. 6, 7 plus R. Remember, we've divided 0 0.6 by 0 0.6, and I'm sure you can already see it. I'm taking this to the other side. So the, our value of R is 15 minus 14.67. Uh, this should give me 0 0.33 ohms. Okay, so uh, that is how we are going to crumble that cookie. And I hope that it made sense to you. All right, just as a, you know, as a way to conclude, uh, some uh, they actually asked in this question: um, Will the emitter reading increase, decrease, or remain the same if the 5.5 ohm resistor is removed? Okay, give a reason for your answer. All right, so we want to know what will happen to the value of that current. Okay, the the emitter reading over there. Okay, um, so how we can basically answer that question, all right, as we conclude, um, we'll say, all right, so if you remove the 5.5 ohm resistor, okay, what will happen? It means that now you've got two resistors uh, in series, right? Um, because remember, this resistor will be gone, okay? So what we will have is we'll have a resistor there, okay? So we'll have the 11 ohm resistor, together with that 11 ohm resistor. So the first thing that's going to happen is that it means R external will now increase. You remember our R external was 11 plus uh, 3,67, okay? But now it's going to be 11 plus 11. So the first thing that we notice is that our R external has increased. So now that we've increased R external, okay? So we know that R external has increased, but we know that I is equal to V over R, isn't it? Okay, so um, in this case, uh, the current, okay, uh, what happens to the total current? Our total current is now going to uh, decrease, right? So I is equals to V over R. So we know with an increase in resistance, what happens to the value of our current? Our current is going to decrease, okay? So in this case, um, however, I want you to note, initially we had the just part of the current passing there. Now we'll have the total current actually passing through there. Okay? Okay, so um, initially, remember, we, we did say that the total current, I mean, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, split over here or it divided, right? But now, 
because this resistor no longer exists, it's only the total current that passes through that emitter there. So yes, even though the total current has decreased, okay, but in this case, there'll be more current that now passes through that emitter, okay, because it's all the current in our circuit that's going to pass there. So I would say it would increase in that particular case. Okay, right. Um, I want to leave it here, ladies and gents, and please uh, remember to subscribe, okay, and please invite others, okay. Uh, remember that we still continue to learn. I'm still going to be giving you these revision questions uh, as we go along, so I hope that you will appreciate and, uh, um, you know, just use them to the maximum, okay. So please remember to subscribe, and if you like this lesson, just put a thumbs up and we'll continue to dish out the good lessons. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.